the largest territory of the Westerosi continent. The north was a land of vast forests and snow-capped mountains, where summers were cold and winters devastating. Long before the migration of men, these lands were populated by a race of giants who grew between 10 and 12 feet tall, and the children of the forest, a mysterious and magical people, small in stature, dark and beautiful. The children were a Stone Age culture who carved faces into weirwood trees, worshipping them as gods and believing that when they died, their spirits would live on in the trees, keeping watch over the forests. Many of the children possessed magical abilities, able to skin change, sending their consciousness into the body of an animal, and possessing the green sight which granted them prophetic dreams. However, 12,000 years before Aegon's conquest, a Bronze Age people known as the First Men began their migration west, crossing through the Arm of Dorne in the far south, which connected their continent to Essos, the land beyond the Narrow Sea. Some say these people were led by the first king who journeyed across much of Westeros until at last laid to rest in the Barrowlands of the north. The first men brought new technologies and cultural practices to the continent, introducing metal, horses, and pagan gods, as well as a writing system of runes whose meaning was largely lost over time. As they settled the land, they waged war against the children of the forest, who became so desperate to defend their homeland, they attempted two great magical rituals, with the first shattering the arm of Dorne to halt the continued migration of men into the continent. Despite this victory, the war continued growing more aggressive and forced the children to retreat into the north, where they performed a second great ritual, possibly from the children's tower of Moat Kaelin, calling upon the gods to send the Hammer of the Waters to shatter the neck of the Westerosi continent and split the landmass in two, but they ultimately failed and merely flooded the territory, creating swamps and marshlands. Eventually, the First Men met with the children on the Isle of Faces, reaching a peace agreement known as the Pact, which gave the native race dominion over the deep woods, while the First Men took the open lands, and over time many adopted the worship of the old gods. Unfortunately, the years of war left both the children of the forest and giant race with severely reduced populations, beginning their descent into near extinction, with only a small number surviving in the far north. Following the years of war came the Age of Heroes, when legends say great men and women roamed the lands of Westeros, establishing houses and realms that would endure for thousands of years to come. Unfortunately, a terrible calamity eventually fell upon them, with the Long Night believed to have occurred between 8 and 6,000 years before conquest. For a generation, Westeros suffered from a harsh winter and darkness, while a race of strange creatures known as the Others or White Walkers descended upon them from the lands of always winter. Stories describe them as tall and gaunt, with skin as pale as milk, and eyes that shine bright blue, wearing camouflage armor and wielding magical swords of ice. For years they wreaked havoc across the land, until stories say the legendary last hero journeyed deep into the north, wielding dragon steel to recruit the children of the forest into helping humanity in their struggle. As the war continued on, an organization known as the Night's Watch formed to fight against the invaders, finally achieving victory at the Battle for the Dawn. The others were then pushed back to the lands of always winter, not seen again for thousands of years. Following the end of the Long Night, a great wall was built in the far north, with the children of the forest casting defensive spells upon the ice. The Night's Watch were then given command, swearing oaths to guard the realms of men from any threat beyond the wall. Perhaps the most well-known Northman of this age, Bran the Builder, was credited with the creation of the Wall, and also gifted lands to the Night's Watch so they could sustain themselves. Many claim it was Bran the Builder who founded House Stark, built Winterfell, and was crowned first King of Winter. With his legend growing so large, he was featured in Southern stories as well, believed to have aided in the construction of Storm's End and the High Tower. Others in the north also claim a connection to this ancient past, with House Bolton descending from the Red Kings of the Dreadfort, while House Dustin derived from the Barrow Kings, who in turn claimed descent from the First King, the men who led their people into Westeros. Then there were the Cranog Men of the Neck, who proclaimed the Marsh King as their ancestor, a man who rode lizard lions and wielded a frog spear as he defended the north from southern invaders. And while he was remembered as a king, he never put himself above his people, considered instead to be a first among equals. In the years following the creation of the Wall, those first men trapped on the northern side started to develop their own culture of fierce independence, becoming known as the Free Folk or Wildlings, and growing to hate the people of the south who lived in warmth and relative luxury. 
Though they valued their independence, the free folk would occasionally unite to follow a king beyond the wall, often in the hopes of finding a way to raid or take lands in the south. And so when the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch betrayed his oath and tried to declare himself the Night's King alongside the Night's Queen, the King of Winter entered into an uneasy alliance with Joramon, King Beyond the Wall, attacking together and defeating their enemy to free the Watch from his brutal reign. After thousands of years prospering as the dominant population of Westeros, the First Men were eventually supplanted by a new people sailing from across the Narrow Sea, beginning their own period of Western migration. Although many date the start of the Andal invasion to 6,000 years before conquest, some maesters argue it was nearer to 4,000, while others still say 2,000. According to the legends of these tall, fair-haired invaders, the lands of Westeros were promised to them by their god who appeared in the form of seven deities, and crowned Hugor of the Hill as their first king, proclaiming that his people would establish a mighty kingdom in a foreign land. Yet most maesters disregard such stories, and instead believe the migration occurred as a result of the Valyrian freehold expanding into western Essos, leading many of the Andals to flee from the approaching dragon lords. An Iron Age people, the Andals conquered or intermarried with much of the south, successfully spreading their language, culture, and religion, but had far less success in their attempted invasion of the north. Unwilling to allow their territory to fall to these foreign conquerors, King Theon of House Stark allied with the Red King of House Bolton to defeat the Andal warlord Argos Seven Star at the Battle of the Weeping Water. Following their victory, King Theon, also known as the Hungry Wolf, sailed his ships across the Narrow Sea and attacked their enemy's homeland of Andalos in retribution, slaying many and displaying their heads along the eastern coast of the Northern Territory to deter future attacks. Sometime later, the Andals attempted another invasion, this time marching north through the Neck, only to be thrown back by the Cranog men, eventually retreating and accepting First Men rule in the north. As a consequence of the years of war and migration, the Andal language, system of writing, use of iron, traditions of knighthood, and chivalry took hold in the southern realms, leaving the north as the only major territory where First Men culture and tradition survived. Love audiobooks? Then be sure to check out Audible, where they have the world's largest collection available. Simply sign up through the link in the description box below and get two free audiobooks to start out. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Ariana, the Lady of the Tower, Sir Daeron of House Ashford, Lord Terax Zoron, and Caesar the Salad. If you'd like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and click on the links to see more.